Hey, so normally I wouldn't need to make a content disclaimer for a Let's Play, but this game in particular warrants it. The game being covered in this LP is Cruelty Squad, which contains scenes of explicit violence, gore, and a complete disregard for any cause with a pleasant visual slash oral stimuli, which could make it dangerous to people with a history of photosensitivity or epilepsy. As well as to those without it. Viewer discretion is advised. Just another day. Man, I had no idea you were quite so dummy thick. Yeah. Oh hey, you've got the same glasses as me. That's cool. Yeah, they're they're for protection. Sh showers are kind of acidic. No, it was a depression shower, fuck nuts. Yeah, it's Yeah, life's been not too kind. As a hired killer. I do appreciate the widescreen CRT, now that I'm looking at more of this <laughs> cutscene, like, thoroughly. Meanwhile, in Redacted City here. Meanwhile, in America. Yeah. Actually, screw that, this is Cruelty Squad, like, like, this is the future that, like, the worst parts of America want all around the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is the future liberals want- wait. Is Wait. Him? No. This is the future Chuds want. God, it's like every induction I've ever had, every temp job I've ever been at. Yep. Just gonna stare at the white noise now, I guess. Welcome to Cruelty Squad. Just drinking that. Everything. That's Slurpcore. Ah. Uh, <laughs> God, it's like David Cronenberg and H.R. Giger just shitting all over an MS Paint drawing of a dolly. The freaking deep fried unholy union of old school Tom Clancy Rainbow Six, Looking Glass Games, Quake, and LSD Dream Emulator. It's like a vaporwave seizure. Created by Consumer Soft Products, or I think, as is more appropriate to, and specific to describe, the work of, I'm pretty sure, a single man known as uh, Vil Calio. I'm assuming I am pronouncing that right. I have no idea, like, my, my, my way of, like, pronouncing Finnish names, if it's correct or not, in which case I am sorry. But he is, uh, if you look him up and, like, uh, just think about, like, why this game looks this way, and then you look at the creator's past works prior to this, because this is his first and only, like, commercial game release, you understand why. Because, yeah, no shit, like, a surrealist multimedia artist would produce a video game that looks like this. Mm. I mean, it, this goes right past surreal into... Like, I, I feel like we need to develop new terms just to describe what Cruelty Squad is. Yeah, which, for this introduction video, hopefully I'll be able to explain enough of that. <laughs> because right now, here at the main menu, you get a level select, as well as your ability to choose weapons that you want to take into, uh, into a level, of which you can only equip two at a, at a time. And you have a selection of four, like two lethal and two non-lethal. One of those non-lethal being a baton, so it's like not even a it's not even a ranged weapon. Mm. And this is a game in which rain being anywhere near like in sight of an enemy is pretty much a death sentence. Yeah, unless you unless they haven't got the drop on you. It's like yeah. You know how id software always like kind of described Doom Eternal when it was coming out and after it came out where it's like if you're standing still you die? In this, it's like, if anyone sees you, you die. But it's yeah. not a stealth game. No, no. This, this, like, you know, in a similar way, this is a game where you need to relearn how to play it. Because you go in thinking, oh, it's an immersive sim. And then you die repeatedly and get really annoyed and uninstall the game. Yeah, and wondering, why does this have, like, overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam with no negatives in sight? 
looking at you, CB11. <laughs> and everyone else that ever covered this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, Markiplier covered this, and that was entirely on the basis that he refused to believe initially that a game that looks this shitty could possibly be an overwhelmingly positive title. A game that has an in-universe, like, highly volatile stock market. Just yeah. like the real stock market. <laughs> um, also a game in which you trade body parts and fish for profit. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's there's nothing about this game that makes sense. Either without, within or without. Like, the whole thing is a clusterfuck nightmare. But it works, question mark. Hey, look at that! There's even a stock for the uh, for the game company that made this. I mean, made Gorbino's Quest. <laughs> also, Games Games being like a storefront that has stock in here. You could tell this was added after the GameStop short squeeze from like last <laughs> yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, I I think the the stock exchange was in the early access version, but it was just sort of. I think it was just there to add a little bit of flavor and to possibly get you a bit of cash. And then the yeah. GameStop thing happened and it just went full force into it. Yeah, there's a very shitposty attitude behind it. <laughs> which, I th which I think is backed up thoroughly by if you ever look at Kalio's Twitter account and realize that not everything he posts looks like this, but everything he says sounds like this. <laughs> so here we are at HQ. Now, if only the receptionist could get fucking closer to the edge of the booth. Oh, God damn it! who cares? I'm just gonna... Well, I can't talk through the glass, so fuck it. <laughs> well, at least he's very friendly. I genuinely want to know as well, for anyone that possibly had played this game for the first time, if they ever bothered to check out Cruelty Squad HQ, like, end the level of thoroughness that I'm going to be demonstrating for the rest of this video. Because based on how people's experiences go, like, in the first proper level, like, you would think that they were just diving in at first and, like, not taking the time to absorb anything. But then again, with how it looks, like, how, how could you learn to take things in? <laughs> How would you be able to process right away that this game's idea of reloading is that you hold the right mouse button and move it down past the threshold so that it reloads? Seriously, that took me forever to work out. Like... It took me only a few minutes, but that's only because literally every person I saw on the internet that was playing this game had already mentioned it, so I knew <laughs> to mentally prepare myself. See, I'm the weirdo that saw it, um, people, well, saw people talking about it saying this game has no right being as good as it is. I was like, yeah. I need to get my hands on it. And <laughs> just looked at it and was like, yeah, this looks like an absolute AI generated nightmare. Naturally, I have to get my hands on it. Like, why wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> and then someone compared it to um, Inland Empire by David Lynch and I was like, fucking sold. Oh, that, that's a, that's a good poll. <laughs> I was just like, hmm, so you're saying it's incomprehensible and nightmarish and strangely funny all at the same time. Yep, that, yep, yep, yep. <sighs> that is 100% accurate. So yeah, we have like our little combat training course. We can lean around corners, which is largely useless because if you lean with most other weapons, your accuracy goes to shit. Yeah, the, the reticle will just start vibrating like fuck all over the place. It's yeah, it's good for getting a sneak peek, but that's about it. Yeah, but you also have other handy features like a kick, which can break open most doors. You can crouch. And like any good immersive sim, we have to have a simulation of a basketball court. <laughs> See, I was actually going to say that this opening... Um, when I actually did it, kind of reminded me of System Shock 2 the first time I played yeah. it. Didn't find yeah. the basketball court, though. <laughs> oh, the, well, that's because the court is way deep into the game once you're actually on the ship. Mm. Oh, no, I'm talking about in this. Oh, in this? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, like, I, it was weird, because, like, it doesn't look like a basketball court when you walk in, but that's because most things in, in this game don't look like actual real-world counterparts. But, like, as soon as I realized that that was a hoop, like, I tried in many practice recordings 
desperately trying to get anything to land in that basket. And when I, uh, and like this recording, when I got it like in three tries, I was so happy. <laughs> anyway, here's our colleagues. He likes weapons that shoot flechettes. Yeah, the flechettes and this are roughly the size of a crossbow ball. Yeah. A common theme you will find with basically all guns in this game. And I'm going to also extend it again to this tranquilizer gun, even though it is a non-lethal weapon. Everything, I am pretty sure, is designed with the idea that if it does not produce a war crime with every single trigger pull, it is a defective product. Yep. We have guns that shoot chemical weapons, like, everywhere. Yeah, like, chemical the weapons. <laughs> the toilets are chemical weapons. <laughs> Fleshettes, as you described, we way later on get a gun that shoots depleted uranium bullets. Yeah. And, and even this tranquilizer, even though it's non-lethal, it's not like... It's not a tranquilizer that is, like, specifically designed in ways so that it is perfectly tuned to humans. Because, like, most gun companies in this universe don't find that practical. They instead repurpose, like, elephant tranquilizers. <laughs> this is the good shit you're firing. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, all the weapons have some small description with them. And mm -hmm. some, of them, some of them are just, yeah, it's a gun, it does this. And then some of them, you read them and you're like... That feels unethical. Yeah. I mean, it, when you're in a game called Cruelty Squad, is there really any concept of ethics left anymore? <laughs> yeah, the, as, as it's been pointed out, it's Cruelty Squad, not Be Mean to People Squad. Yeah. Unfortunately, we cannot pass this toxic river. But I figure since we've picked up some extra cash lying around the HQ because, I mean, like, it was just lying there. No one's clearly using it. I figure we might as well get it, uh, get things in a bit early, you know, because, like, we started a new job. We're technically broke. We basically have a, as clean a slate as possible. So why not invest in our future mm. to ensure that we can uh, do things properly? See, Which, I, thought, uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, you know, why, why not start off just by committing self -heat? Yeah. <laughs> it's that kind of a game. <laughs> yeah. Also showing off bunny hopping just because I can. Yep. But, vital movement technique. Yep. That That's why I said Quake was part of the combination. Because there is like a disturbing amount of like analogous like late 90s first person shooter like movement tech in here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But it's like. I, yeah, I don't show it here, but like as will be demonstrated very early on, that money we picked up is very important because otherwise, for most people that would probably have like picked up this game blind, they would probably load into Cruelty Squad HQ, realize it's designed like a hub area and doesn't have a completable objective, then go straight into the first level and just get creamed because they have no idea what to expect, therefore potentially missing out on all of that money I had just picked up. <laughs> Where that goes... You'll find out in the next video.